صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة يا غريب يا شهيد كربلا فيا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful. The one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved Messenger. The peak of His creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad And His Immaculate Progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May Allah hasten His reappearance and make us amongst His sincere ded and dedicated servants and amongst those who will rise with Him to seek the vengeance for the killing of Al-Imam al Hussein, Salawatullahi Alayhi. My dear brothers and sisters, on this very sorrowful and tragic evening, the eve of Ashura, I extend to you my sincerest condolences on the greatest tragedy that has ever struck history. That is the martyrdom of Aba Abdullah al Hussein and his family members and his companions. On this Eve of Ashura, as we get closer to the tragedy, it is very helpful for us to shed some light on the speeches of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. We want to better know our Imam. The Imam alayhi salam gave many speeches throughout his life, and we'd like to benefit from the content from the message contained in these amazing speeches. In our discussion this evening, we will analyze briefly three speeches that Imam al Hussein salam gave. The first one is about one year before Karbala, in Mina during the Hajj season. The second one is when Imam Hussein salam was about to leave Mecca to Iraq. This is about one month before Karbala. And the last of the three is the speech that he gave in the land of Karbala on the day of Ashura as he was facing the enemies. Let's now go back to year 60 of the Hijrah or actually 59 of the Hijrah technically. This is one year before Muawiyah died. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam went to the Hajj that year. Imam Hussein would frequently go to the Hajj. In fact, he went to the Hajj 25 times on feet, walking, to show his servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Historians tell us that al Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was in Mina. Before he gave the speech, he called on many of the companions of the Prophet to come and join and listen to the speech. And many righteous people from his friends, family members, other people from the Tabi'een, the generation that comes after the Sahaba, the companions, the Imam gathered them. 700 people were now gathered in Mina by Mecca during the Hajj season to listen to the speech of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. 200 of these 700 people were Sahaba were companions who met the Prophet The Imam السلام, starts the speech by saying, أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَإِنَّ هَذَا الطَّاغِيَ قَدْ فَعَلَ بِنَا وَبِشِيعَتِنَا مَا قَدْ رَأَيْتُمْ وَعَلِمْتُمْ وَشَهِدْتُمْ O people, you see that this dictator 
this arrogant ruler has done to us and our followers what you've all seen, you've all heard about it. In the beginning of his sermon, Imam al Hussein salam is highlighting the injustice of Muawiyah. Now this is very significant because there are some who have claimed that before Karbala, Imam Hussein salam did not show any position or stance towards the injustice. It's only when Yazid came to power, Imam Hussein salam spoke up. That's not the case. Imam Hussein salam spoke up during the time of Muawiyah. Yes, he continued the treaty, the truce, the peace treaty that was started by his brother Al Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam. He did not fight. But this did not mean that Al Imam Al Hussein kept silent. And this is a lesson for us that we cannot keep silent. Fighting for justice doesn't mean that you have to go to the battlefield and fight. Sometimes that may be the case. Like in Karbala, the Imam alayhi salam had to go and fight. But usually the way we repel injustice is by speaking up. So the Imam salam condemned Muawiyah and that he is an evil dictator. Yes, there is a peace treaty, but it does not mean that Muawiyah is off the hook. I still condemn him. And then the Imam highlights what happened to the Shia. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we think life is tough for us. We think we have family problems in this society. It's difficult to be practicing. It's dif difficult to observe my prayers. It's difficult to observe hijab, avoid music, avoid haram food. We think it's tough. Believe me, in this era you live as kings. This is not to underestimate anyone's trial. But do you know what would happen during the time of Muawiyah? to the Shia of Al-Muhammad. Imam al Hussein is saying, you all know what Muawiyah has done to us. The Shia were persecuted. Sometimes their homes were demolished. They would not receive any salary from the public funds like anyone else would. Some of them would be killed. Amr ibn al-Hamaq al-Khuza'i. He was a companion of Rasulullah, a companion, a Sahaba. Wasn't he a Sahabi? You know what Muawiyah ordered for him to be done? Because he was not with Muawiyah, he was with the Ahlul Bayt. Muawiyah had him killed and his head was slaughtered in Musil, north of Iraq. And the head of Amr ibn al-Hamaq al-Khuza'i was sent as a gift to Muawiyah. This was the first head to be gifted to a ruler after Islam. Muawiyah instituted this. And then there are some ignorant people today. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, he's a Sahabi. Yeah, he, what kind of a Sahabi? He killed other Sahabi. How can you have respect for him? Imagine the Shia living during those eras. It was so difficult. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is highlighting this. That Muawiyah is not off the hook. I condemn what he did. Then the Imam alayhi salam in the next passage of the sermon, he highlights the role of scholars. Scholars, community leaders, they cannot be silent. People take this lesson from the Quran, how Allah criticizes the Ahbar, the Jewish scholars. What does Allah say in the Holy Quran? The Quran condemns them. Why is it that the scholars are not stopping the aggression? Imam al Hussein salam beautifully comments here. The Imam salam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned these scholars because they saw the rulers committing acts of injustice and they did not speak up, they kept silent. And that's why it's very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, as we see injustice, I know we're all concerned about our livelihood, our life. We have Corona to deal with. I understand. But we should never fall short in speaking against injustice, wherever you see it. You see it domestically or internationally. Today, there's a lot of injustice going on here in America. The racism that we see, the immorality that we're seeing. Just see. The last three, four years, what's been happening, my dear brothers and sisters, coming from the highest office in the country. 
no regard for any virtues or values, teaching the whole nation how to lie. We, we condemn this. We're not being political, but we condemn this. This is an act of injustice. The wars that are going on in Yemen, elsewhere around the world, we condemn that. We have to speak up. Imam Hussein salam says, if we don't, we will be condemned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see Imam al Hussein salam is mobilizing the people to speak up against injustice and to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. He highlights Al Amr bil Ma'ruf wa Nahi an al Munkar. So we find that the Imam salam says, Fabada Allahu bil Amr bil Ma'ruf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation. When you see something wrong, do something. Don't say no, it's none of my business. This none of my business attitude is not an Islamic attitude. You see something wrong in the family? Someone being oppressed? Speak up. There's a lot of injustice that goes on in our families, my dear brothers and sisters. No, I'd rather not get involved. What do you mean you'd rather not get involved? You see a fellow relative is being oppressed, harassed, and you don't say anything? You don't at least try to do anything? Allah does not accept this from you. Whatever it may be, sometimes there's an inheritance issue. Some brothers, they take the inheritance of their sisters. Nobody speaks up. No, you have to speak up. Sometimes you see one of your friends is being bullied. At school you see someone being bullied. No, it's none of my business. It's none of your business. Allah won't accept your deeds. Pray and pray, do dua, Allah's not going to answer you. Imam al Hussein salam says this is a faridha. This is an obligation. Because those people who do wrong and they bring forth immorality, they normalize it in society. They make it okay. They're harming everyone. No one has the right to harm others. Today, if you're, let's say, in a place, right? And someone comes not wearing a mask. You're out there, you're at the mall, you're doing grocery shopping, or there are some majalis who do have uh, in-person programs with social distancing and masks. Someone comes and he says, you know what? I don't care. I don't believe in this virus. I don't believe in this mask. I'll do whatever I want. I'll get close to you. I'll even sneeze in your face. <laughs> Would you let him? Oh, yeah. Free country, it's a free country, do whatever you want. You're go that person is endangering others because this is a virus. If he's carrying the virus, he's going to infect others. My dear brothers and sisters, there's a moral virus. There is a moral virus, ethical virus. When you see something wrong in your family, amongst your friends, do something. Yes, be wise, use the best approach, no doubt, but in the end, you have to say something. So Imam Hussein salam highlights the significance of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Then the Imam salam says the root cause of all this mess is because you people are not sacrificing enough to stand with the chosen Imams. Allah has given you leaders. If you had followed them, the earth would not be like this. People betrayed the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. And until today, we continue to betray the Imams by not following their teachings, by not reflecting their teachings. The Imam salam, was very upset in Mina. You people, because you don't want to sacrifice, the likes of Muawiyah, they come to power. Had you sacrificed more, Muawiyah would not have had the audacity to do what he did. But it's because we're not doing more. And today, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi expects the same from us. We say, Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj. But what are we doing to hasten the reappearance? What are we doing to work for justice at the individual level, the family level, the social level, the global level? So Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is telling them, had you been more patient, you would have sacrificed more, things would not have become like this. You would have lived in an oasis of peace on this earth. Then the Imam alayhi salam, he concludes his sermon in Mina by stating his objective. See, this is one year before Karbala. The Imam is already setting the stage. He's preparing the people that I have a mission in this life. And I'm not acting our, out of personal desires. 
The Imam السلام, says, Allahumma innaka ta'lamu annahu lam yakun ma kana minna tanafusan fi sultan. Oh Allah, you know very well that we the Ahlul Bayt, we're not trying to compete for power. Wal-altimasan min fudul al-hutam. And we're not trying to get money or wealth. Absolutely not. Walakin linuri al-ma'alima min deenik. Oh Allah, we are rising, the Ahlul Bayt, to show people your religion. وَنُظْهِرَ الْإِصْلَاحَ فِي بِلَادِكَ And to show reform and righteousness in your lands. وَيَأْمَنَ الْمَظْلُومُونَ مِنْ عِبَادِكَ And that people who are oppressed, they feel safe. That's why this is the message of Ahlul Bayt, to establish the religion of God and bring peace and security for the people. I'm not going to rise for a personal agenda here. And Imam al Hussein demonstrates this point when he leaves to Iraq by taking his family, women and children. Many people wonder, why did Imam Hussein take the women and children with him? Why would you do that? Aren't you putting them in danger? Which, you know, responsible man puts the women and children in danger if he's going on a dangerous trip? Imam al Hussein had, had an objective. One reason was to show to the world that he was sincere, he's not going for power. In fact, Charles Dickens, he mentions this, the famous literary figure. He says, if Hussein rose to power, why did he take the women and children with him? This demonstrates that Hussein was sincere for Islam. Because when you take your beloved family with you, you're being honest, I'm not here for power. If I'm here for power, I'm not gonna put my family in danger. I'm here for a cause and that is to uphold justice. So I'll bring my family to show that to you. And secondly, Imam Hussain knew that when he'd be killed and his family members would be killed and his companions would be killed, who would be there to tell the world what happened in Karbala? Especially with the Umayyad propaganda machine and their censorship of the media. It's the women and the children. They let the world know what happened in Karbala. They were the media of Imam Hussain this is the first speech, my dear brothers and sisters. It's a very important speech. One year before the event of Karbala, the Imam gave the speech in Mina. In the presence of 700 people, 200 of them were companions. And we see that the Imam السلام, is setting the stage. He's educating the man masses. You have to stand up. But people don't care, my dear brothers and sisters. No, I want to have my comfortable life as long as I have a job, and that's it. Isn't it so today, if you look at Americans, right? Not all of them, there are many decent Americans, but many of them, all they care is about the economy. As long as I have my job, I don't care what happens on earth. Let America burn half of the world. Let the president do whatever he wants. I don't care, I want my job. Isn't it so? Many people, they just think of their jobs, they don't care. They're not willing to sacrifice. So Imam Hussein gave this powerful speech, but many people did not care to stand up against Muawiyah and his aggression and the Umayyad aggression. Now we transition to the second speech. This speech was given by Imam Hussein when he was in Mecca the next year, right before he left to Karbala. Because Imam Hussein at the end of Rajab, he left Medina, he came to Mecca. On the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, one day before Hajj starts, Imam Hussein deliberately left to send a powerful message to the world that fighting against injustice is more important. You Muslims, you think you come here, you do the Hajj under a dictator like Yazid and you don't reject injustice. You think Allah accepts your Hajj? You have to stand up. So the Imam السلام, gives this speech shortly before he leaves the land of Mecca going to Iraq. The Imam السلام, starts by mentioning death. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He praises Allah. خط الموت على ولد آدم مخط القلادة على جيد الفتاة. An amazing description of death in the words of Imam Hussein السلام. He says death has been written on the children of Adam. Death surrounds the children of Adam just like a necklace surrounds the neck of the one wearing it. 
And the Imam mentions a woman. Have you seen a woman who wears a necklace? The necklace surrounds her neck. The Imam السلام, says, this is how death is. Death is surrounding you. Don't think there's an escape from death. Now, why do you think the Imam would start his speech by talking about death? Because in other words, the Imam is saying, look people, death is going to come to you. One day you have to leave. Therefore, die with faith, die in honor. If you have to leave anyway, then at least do the right thing and die. You think there is an escape from death? No one can escape death. This world one day will come to an end. And on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein wrote a letter. It's the shortest letter that the Imam ever wrote. One sentence. The Imam says, it's as if the world does not even exist. And it's as if the Akhirah is ever present. One line from Imam Hussein The Akhirah is infinite. The infinity of the Akhirah dwarfs the size of this world. You live 70, 80 years, 90 years, okay. The Akhirah is infinite. And that infinite life is based on these 70, 80 years. This life has no value, it's nothing. Divide any number by infinity, what do you get? Zero. Mathematically you get zero. The Imam is saying the value of this dunya is zero. Because the Akhirah is ever present. The believer can feel the Akhirah from this dunya. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in Khutbat al-Muttaqeen, he describes the believers. He says, they can see heaven and hell from here. They can feel heaven and hell from here. The Akhirah is so big and massive and eternal, it dwarfs this dunya. This dunya is like a quick dream. You don't even feel it. It's zero. So the Imam reminds us of death. Now is it worth it for me to destroy that infinite Akhirah? for a few days of pleasure here in this dunya, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? I have to leave anyway, at least let me leave prepared. That's the message of Ashura my dear brothers and sisters. Imagine you are going to a very important appointment, it's the appointment of your life, that final exam or maybe uh, that f interview that's going to determine your career. But to get to that side, you have to cross a bridge. Now imagine you're crossing the bridge and you see there's a line, there's chaos. Hey, what's going on here? They're passing out cookies. <laughs> so you stand in line fighting with others trying to get some cookies. Yeah, I want those cookies. And you waste time until what? You miss your interview. Imagine if someone puts himself in that situation. What would you say about this person? Honestly, that's what we do every single day. Dunya is a bridge to the Akhirah. A bridge to the Akhirah. We're distracting ourselves day and night with petty issues. The Imam السلام, reminds us of death. It surrounds you. Don't think there is an escape. No one can escape death. Not the richest of the rich. Yesterday, Jeff Bezos became, became well, he was the richest person on the planet. He became even richer. Now his wealth is estimated at 200 billion dollars. 200 billion dollars. My dear brothers and sisters, if he wants to spend a million dollars a day, no, 10 million dollars a day, can he spend all his wealth? What does he want to do with that wealth? You think that wealth is protecting you? You think that wealth is going to avoid death for you? Alexander the Great, he made in his will that when I die, I have three requests. One of them, I want only doctors to carry my janaza, my casket to the grave. Only doctors, the best physicians. Number two, get all the money that I have in my kingdom. The jewelry, the gold, the silver, the precious stones, the currency, the coins. I want you from my grave, from my bed to my grave, throw that money on the ground, make like a pathway from my bed to the grave. And number three, I want you to have my hands extended like that, out of the kefen. 
They told him, we don't get this. Are you out of your mind? He said, yes, I'll explain it to you. I want the physicians to carry my janazah to show to the world that I had the best doctors, but they could not save me from death. Here, they're walking in my funeral. All the money that I have, it did not save me from death. And just as I came to this dunya empty-handed, I leave empty-handed. That's the reality of life. Okay, you have 200 billion dollars. That What's next? You think it's easy now to, for this person to leave dunya when you have 200 billion dollars? Believe me brothers and sisters, thank God you don't have that money because when you have that money and Israel, the angel of death comes to you, oh boy, good luck. Good luck trying to detach this heart from dunya. No, I have 200 billion. I could live another 5,000 years and spend this money. No. You're not going to live 5,000 years. A few years and you have to leave. So Imam Hussein salam sets the stage for Karbala by talking about death and the significance of death. Then the Imam salam he talks about a very important point here in the speech. The Imam salam highlights his extreme joy to meet those who left before him, his eagerness to meet them, his shawq. And he says, وَمَا أَوْلَهَنِي إِلَىٰ أَسْلَافِي إِشْتِيَاقِ يَعْقُوب إِلَىٰ يوسف. The Imam السلام, states, you know Yaqub, how much he missed and he loved Yusuf, 40 years of separation. It's the peak of the peak of missing someone, loving someone. The Imam السلام, states, those who have left before me, my grandfather, my father, my uncles, my brother Hassan, my mother Fatima, I miss them more than Yaqub, Mrs. Yusuf. In other words, the Imam says, what do I have in this dunya? I miss Ashab al-Kisa. I want to go back to them. Allahu Akbar. Imagine Imam Hussein in this world, gharib, really gharib. People betraying him, people abandoning him. He knows thousands of people will come to fight him and kill him. The Imam says, I miss those who came before me, my ancestors, I really miss them. I don't want to stay in this dunya. Why would I stay in this dunya? That's it, my time's up. And my dear brothers and sisters, one of the most beautiful aspects of the Akhirah, of the Barzakh for the one who's prepared, is that you meet the shining stars of Ahlul Bayt. We have many narrations that the believer at the moment of death sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sees the beautiful face of Amir al muminin In fact, one of the companions of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, the Imam asked him, the Imam told him, do you go and visit Hussein in Karbala? He was from Basra. He told him, Aba Abdullah, I, I can't because I'm a well-known figure. If I go, they'll persecute me, kill me. But I become very depressed. On the days of Ashura, when Muharram starts, the day of Ashura, I cannot eat. My family sees me in a severe depressed state, sorrowful state. I cannot eat. I cannot do anything. The Imam says, if really you have that jaza, you have that feeling of despair, you have that feeling of sorrow for Abba Abdullah al-Hussein, I promise you, at the moment of death, you shall see my fathers and grandfathers. You shall see Abba Abdullah al-Hussein and they will tell the angel of death, be gentle with him, he is one of us. When you read this, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes you just want to leave this dunya and go in the company of Rasulullah, go in the company of the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt. There's nothing more honorable than that. Then the Imam salam talks about the divine trial. He says, وَخِيرَ لِي مَسْرَعٌ أَنَا لَاقِي Yes, that martyrdom, that killing, that massacre has been approved by Allah in His divine will. Allah has decided that this is my fate, that I shall leave this dunya as a shaheed. And I accept that. 
Then the Imam says, كَأَنِّي بِأَوْصَالِي تُقَطْعُهَا عُسْلَانُ الْفَلَوَاتِ بَيْنَ النَّوَاوِيسِ وَكَرْبَلَا The Imam says, it's as if I can see my body parts being severed by wild animals by Karbala. Yes, the Imam foretold about what would happen to him in Karbala. But the Imam السلام, was full of Iman. I can't run away from a will that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for me. Rida Allah, ridana ahl al -bayt. The satisfaction of Allah, the pleasure of Allah is our satisfaction, is our pleasure the Ahlul Bayt. Nasbiru ala bala'ih wa yuwafina ujur as sabirin. We are patient when it comes to times of tragedy and Allah will give us the full ajr and the full reward of the patient ones. You see how Imam Hussain says, Ridha Allah, Ridhana Ahlul Bayt. This is why the Ahlul Bayt, my dear brothers and sisters, is the best family in history. Everything that happened to them, they're going to their martyrdom, they thank Allah. Oh Allah, we accept the will. If you just accept the will of Allah, you'll have peace of mind. You'll sleep the best sleep, believe me. At night, sometimes we struggle to sleep. What will happen tomorrow, next year, next month? Submit yourself to Allah, you have the best creator. Allah knows what's good for you, I don't. Allah sees millions of factors that impact me, I don't. So that's it, submit yourself to Allah, it's okay. At night sleep say, Allah you are my wakil. You know wakil? The one who, the agent who acts on your behalf? Allah says, I'm the wakil. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Allah is wakil. He'll take care of you, submit yourself to him. Then the Imam ends his speech by making an invitation for the people. Man kana baathilan fina muhjata, the one who'd like to donate his heart to us. Yes, because you'll get killed. Wa muwattanan ala liqa illahi nafsa, and you're ready to meet Allah, falyarhal ma'ana, join me on this journey. Fa innani rahilun musbahan, inshallah. Tomorrow I am going to Iraq. I'm going to Karbala. Look at the honesty of Imam Hussein, my dear brothers and sisters, the honesty of Aba Abdullah. In these moments, a leader wants to mobilize support and have more numbers join him, right? So normally you don't tell them that they're going to die because you want people to support you. If you tell them to die, no one's going to join you. So you hide that from them. Yeah, come, let's go, we'll see what happens. No, Imam Hussein is at the peak of honesty. In this sermon, he tells them, the one who wants to meet Allah, let, let him join us. I have nothing to hide. The one who joins me, the fate is martyrdom. There's no running away from that. This is the honesty of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we transition, transition to the third sermon of Imam Hussein. The one that he gave on the day of Ashura. The Imam in the presence of his enemies, he is looking at them and he says, Ya Ahl al-Iraq, O people of Iraq, Inna waliya Allah al-lazhi nazzal al-kitab, wa huwa yatawalla al-saliheen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my wali. Allah is my guardian. He's the one who revealed the book and he's the one who takes care of the righteous ones. In essence, the Imam alayhi salam, he's here is teaching everyone that Allah is my guardian, don't worry. Let 30,000 people stand before me. I don't care, doesn't matter because Allah is with me, He's on my side. And Imam Hussein beautifully in Dua Arafah, you've all read this Dua, right? Ilahi madha wajada man faqadak. Wa madha faqada man wajadak. Oh Allah, what has He lost, the one who's found you? If you found Allah, you have Allah, what have you lost? You have the king of the universe with you. And what has he found the one who's lost you? If you have the whole world, but you're not on God's side, what do you have? Allah is my guardian, it's okay. He'll take care of me. Don't worry. Allah's with me every step of the way. I have full faith in him, even though I'm going towards my martyrdom. But this is through the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Imam makes a dua. اللهم أنت ثقتي في كل كار ورجائي في كل شدة. Oh Allah, you are my trust in every 
difficulty and you are my hope in every trial and tragedy. وَأَنْتَ لِي فِي كُلِّ أَمْرٍ نَزَلَ بِي ثِقَةٌ وَعُدَّ Then the Imam continues to say, Oh Allah, how many times have I asked you for help when I am stuck and you have helped me, Oh Allah. And then the Imam concludes this dua by saying, Allah is going to help me, He will support me. Now my dear brothers and sisters, some people wonder here, if Imam Hussein made his dua, and the dua of Hussein is mustajab, right? The dua of Abu Abdullah Hussein is not rejected by Allah. Allah accepts. Why didn't Allah save him when he's asking Allah to save him? Give him the power, let him defeat the enemies. Imam Hussein did not ask for physical defeat of the enemies. The Imam asked for moral defeat, spiritual defeat, and he won. Imam Hussein, for him to be saved, did not mean that Allah protects him from being killed and he kills all of his enemies, no. To be saved, that means, oh Allah, let me go back to you now. Save me from this dunya, from this misery, from the betrayal of the people. Let me save your religion. Let me revive the name of Muhammad and the name of Quran. Let me win by awakening the people and saving Islam. That's the help that Imam Hussein السلام, asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Ashura. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him. They killed Imam Hussein, but he defeated them. And the best proof, 14 centuries later, even when there's corona, we sit from our homes and we commemorate Imam Hussein. We'll never forget the legacy of Imam Hussein because Imam Hussein alayhi salam shows us that light. Then the Imam السلام, in the next passage of his speech on the day of Ashura, he looks at his enemies and basically he tells them, do you know who I am? Don't you know who I am? I am the son of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet. Don't you claim to be Muslims who follow the Prophet? The Prophet is my grandfather. Is there any grandson <coughs> to a Prophet today other than me on the face of the planet? Isn't Ali ibn Abi Talib the commander of the faithful and the successor of the pro Prophet, my father? Didn't the Prophet say, me and my brother Hassan, Hassan and I are the masters of the youth of paradise. Haven't you seen this? Haven't you heard this? Do you doubt me? If you doubt me, there are many companions. You can ask them, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, Zayd ibn Arqam, Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Sa'adi, Go and ask them. They'll tell you that the Prophet said this about me and my brother. We're the masters of the youth of paradise. Why are you here to kill us? Don't you know who I am? And then the Imam looks at them. You, you sent me letters. Here, I have the letters. You told me to come to Kufa. Now you've betrayed me? They said, Hussein, we don't know what you're talking about. They denied it. They lied. And the Imam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to curse them for doing this to his family. There was no excuse for them, my dear brothers and sisters. Imam Hussein told them very well who he is. They had no excuse. They told him, no, we don't listen to what you're saying. And here's the ultimatum that we give you. Surrender yourself and we'll take you to Ibn Ziyad or Yazid. The Imam السلام, says, no, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll never do that. La wallah, la u'tikum biyadi i'ta al-dhalil. I'm not going to surrender myself in humiliation. Wala afirru firar al-abid. And I'm not going to run away like the fugitives. Never. This da'i ibn al-da'i, this corrupt ibn Ziyad, has given us two choices. As-silla wa dhilla. Either we fight or we accept humiliation. Impossible for us, the Ahlul Bayt, to be humiliated like that. We'll fight. Allah does not accept for us to be humiliated. The Prophet does not accept for us to be humiliated. So the Imam السلام, made it very clear that he's not going to submit. My dear brothers and sisters, these are the three main speeches of Imam Al Hussein. السلام, in the land of Karbala. And on this night, the eve of Ashura, we also remember one last short speech, one last short speech by Imam Hussein. 
when he was carrying his infant in his arm. The Imam alayhi salam looked at them and he told them, Oh people, you have killed my family members. You have killed the companions of mine. And there is no one else who remains except this young infant. And he is dying from thirst. There is nothing for him to drink. If you think I've committed a crime, if you have no mercy on me, then show mercy to this young infant. Allahu Akbar on this night. O oh, believers, we commemorate the martyrdom, the tragic martyrdom of Ali Azghar, Abdullah al Radi', this youngest child of Imam al Hussein. Salawatullahi alayhi. Yes, O oh believers, on the day of Ashura, Lady Zainab alayhi salam came to Imam Hussein. She told him, Aba Abdullah, take your son. He's withering. His mother no longer can nurse him or breastfeed him. He is withering. See if you can get some water for him. We can't see Ali Asghar like this. An infant, a six month old baby die in front of us like that. Go to them, maybe they'll give him some water. Uh, Sakina was there, she also came. Yes, this is my young brother. You know Sakina and Ali Asghar, they were from the same mother, from Lady Rabab. She loved her dear brother, she couldn't see him. Uh, dying from thirst in front of her eyes. So she comes to Imam Hussein, Yes, Father, please see if you can get some water for Ali Azghar. Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam carries Ali Azghar in his arms. He goes out to the battlefield, O oh believers. Yes, what happens? Imam Hussein carries him. Everyone sees Imam Hussein's not with a sword. He's not here to fight. He's carrying a baby. What does he have to say? He gives them that speech. O oh people, you've killed everyone. No man remains. There, don't worry. If you think I'm going to drink the water here, you take him. Take my baby and you feed him water. He's dying from thirst. <laughs> you know what yatalavva <laughs> mean? Uh, means, my dear brothers and sisters, some linguists have, say, have, have seen, have you seen when the fish is taken outside the water, how it takes its mouth and it's trying to survive? It's breathing its final moments. This is how Ali Asghar was. In those final moments, like a fish outside the water, Ali Asghar was struggling due to the extreme thirst. Imam Hussein told them, give him some water. If you have no mercy on me, then show some mercy to this infant. There was commotion and chaos in the army of Ibn Ziyad, the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad. Some said, yes, what's the harm? It's just a baby. Let's give it some water. Some said, no, don't have mercy on any one of this family. We, they have to die thirsty. This is the order of the Emir. There was commotion. Some said, give him water. Some said, don't. When suddenly Umar ibn Sa'ad, may Allah curse him, he looked at Harmala. Harmala? was a very skilled archer. He told him, Ya Harmala, iqta' niza' al -qawm. Oh Harmala, end the dispute. Don't you see there's chaos? Harmala says, what do you want me to do? My commander, tell me. He tells him, Ama tara abaya <laughs> He tells him, don't you see the whiteness of his neck? Shoot him, take out an arrow. Imam Hussein was carrying his infant in his arms. Oh believers, what happens at this point? This evil man, he takes out a three-headed, spear, a three-pronged arrow, and it was a poisonous arrow, and he targets the neck of the infant, and he shoots Ali Asghar with that 
infant. That arrow comes and it pierces through the neck. Imagine how big is the neck of Ali Asghar. For a three-headed arrow, it's bigger than his neck. Immediately he slaughtered him. Imam Hussein alayhi salam saw his infant being slaughtered in his arms. <laughs> Yes, those narrators who were present there, they say that when Ali Asghar felt the arrow, <laughs> he took out his hands from the swaddle. He took out his arms and he wanted to hug his father. It's as if he wanted to tell him, Father, this is the water that they gave me. By drenching me with blood. <laughs> Imam Hussein puts his hand under the neck of Ali Asghar. He collects the blood and he throws it to the sky. He says, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, one thing gives me patience in this trial. And that's your watching. Oh Allah, you're with me, you're watching. Otherwise, I couldn't handle this tragedy. Not a drop of blood comes back to the earth. Imam Hussein sees his beloved infant slaughtered before him. Sa'adallah qalbaka ya Aba Abdullah. How many tragedies, brothers and sisters, how many tragedies did Hussein face on the day of Ashura? You know, in Ziyarat al Nahiya, which is attributed to Al Imam al Mahdi, you know what Al Imam al Mahdi says? The Imam says, Laqad ajibat min sabrihi malaikatu sama. The angels of the heavens and the skies, they were shocked at the patience of Hussein. Imagine the angels who've seen everything in history, all the trials, all the tragedies, but they were shocked at Hussein. How are you so patient? Imam Hussein takes his infant in his arm. He goes back towards the tent. So one narration says, Imam Hussein, he goes to the tent, but he comes back seven times. <laughs> seven times Imam Hussein goes back and forth. He doesn't know what to do. Where is he going to go? How is he going to show them the slaughtered infant? Ya Allah. And the historians say Imam Hussein was carrying Ali Asghar under his abaya, under his cloak, hiding him. When Zainab came, when Sakina came, they saw Hussein is hiding something under his cloak. Hussein, what, what, what are you carrying? What's the matter? The Imam alayhi salam comes forward to them. He takes out the slaughtered infant. He gives it to Zainab. He says, Zainab, khudihim. Zainab, see what they did to him. This is the water that they gave him. Lady Zainab saw Ali Asghar in that state. Ya Allah, what a tragedy. Sakina saw that tragedy. Then finally, his mother Rabab. Imagine carrying an infant. Raising an infant, spending sleepless nights for your infant. You want to see your child grow, grow before you, be there for you when you grow older. But Rabab, she, she saw the flower of her heart. <laughs> Massacred in front of her. Allahu Akbar. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Wa sayya'lamu alladheena zalamu ala muhammadin. Ayyamun qalabi yanqalibun. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Sallu ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad. اللهم 